Hey, we give you the facts. It's not what you think. Popeye News Link. Young King. One yard. Bless. Good morning, Popeye. Grandma watch Popeye's every morning and every night. What am I think? What am I think? You're listening to Popeye News Links. This is the Admiral Tibet who I represent. And remember, the time is so serious. Contankerous and dangerous. This is Popeye News Links. Yeah, watch Papa's mama. Hmm? Away, I watch. Papa. Greetings, greetings, viewers and subscribers. I posted that footage in yesterday's video. It was about an attempt robbery at a bar on the Negro Beach Road. At the end of the video, I told you that it was my view that that guy in the red shirt was a part of the robbery. A PNL detective reached out to me last night there is the message on your screen the person said bro what a guan the two hoodlums in the robbery are from Kia valley and if you don't know Kia valley is in the green island police area of hanover the person continued i don't know their names but the one with the gun his mother's name is mardi and his father's name is windell he was once wanted for shooting out the eye of a guy named Windsor, but he ran away. And just recently, he returned to the community. The one is the red shirt, is also from Kia Valley. Residents confiscated two homemade guns from him recently. A pure robberies, both of them carrying out in Hanover and Westmoreland. If and when I get their names, I will update you. Well, the person did some digging and sent me that message this morning. The person said, the black one is Darren and the one with the gun is Andel. Officers, oh no please, find Darren and Andel. Darren is living at Keane Road and Andel is living at Mount Erie in the same Key Valley area. Like the PNL detective said, Andel, he did shoot out Windsor Eye at Miss Betty's dead yard. Officers, please get these hoodlums off the street. One way or another. In this next report, now, you would have heard me carrying a few stories about the Montego Bay police arresting and charging persons who were held on the compound of the Freeport Police Station. They were held with contrabands that were intended to go into the jail cells. Well, in this next report, this guy was held with contraband that was intended to go into the cells. And the sad thing is, this guy is one of those who should be assisting or is duty bound to assist in stopping contraband from going into the cells he is now charged for possession of and dealing in ganja plus misconduct in a public office the allegations are that on saturday may 25 constable jaffe chantelope he was on duty at the withern police station lockups in the parish of westmoreland about 2.30 that same afternoon, the constable's supervisor saw when he entered the holding area of the cells. We are told that he entered alone. He had a black plastic bag in one of his hands. The supervisor saw when the constable took some money which turned out to be 1,000 Jamaican dollars from one of the prisoners. The supervisor, he called out to the constable, went to the holding area and took the bag from the police constable. The bag was searched and found to contain a quantity of ganja, 40 Crivenay cigarettes, one plastic bottle full with rum, two packs of Lion Pride Rizla, three lighters and one flow sim card 
The items were seized from the police constable. Statements were collected and a file submitted to the Director of Public Prosecutions. On Tuesday, June 25, the police constable, he was arrested and charged based on a ruling from the DPP. <laughs> Boy, may I tell you. In this next report, detectives have arrested and charged Sashley Campbell. She is 32 years old and she's living at Cedar Street in the Rhine Park area of Little River in the parish of St. James. She has been booked for lottery scamming charges. We are told that her common law spouse, 30 year old Roshan, he will also be charged. The allegations are that sometime last month, Members of MOCA, that's the major organized crime and anti-corruption agency. They carried out a raid at Russian and Sashley's apartment and several electronic devices were seized. When checked, they were found to contain images of personal information for persons living overseas. Sashley, she was charged yesterday following a question and answer session in the presence of her lawyer. Like I said earlier, Russian is expected to be charged shortly. Over in Westmoreland, 20-year-old Demar Dyke of Content District in the Williamsfield area of Westmoreland, he has also been slapped with lottery scamming charges. Early yesterday morning, Wednesday, June 26, about minutes after 5 o'clock, a team of police officers, they carried out a raid at the Mars home. His pink iPhone 7 cell phone and his Dell laptop were searched and found to contain names, addresses, zip codes and telephone numbers for persons who are living overseas. After checks were done, he was charged and he'll be going to the courts shortly. In this next report, on Thursday, June 20, about 5 o'clock, a lady, she locked up her family's home at CLM Beach Road in the Runaway Bay area of Sentan and went elsewhere to spend the weekend. When she returned home Monday morning, June 24, about 9 o'clock, she realized that the house it was broken into. Hoodlums used implements to pry open windows to the front of the house and entered. Once inside, they ransacked the whole house and thief all the could thief. <laughs> Look here now. You, Mr. Sir, who I tell me, say, me should use the word steal instead of thief. If you don't like it. <laughs> Anyhow, them thief cash to include Jamaican, US and Canadian dollars, TV, chainsaw, car parts, food items and a lot more. They also stole the DVR camera system. They then made good their escape. Just like that. Now, this next incident, it took place early yesterday morning. Wednesday, June 26, about a few minutes to 5 o'clock. It took place at a church at Granville Drive in the Granville area of St. James. We are told that a 50-year-old man known as Ensworth, he was in the two-story concrete building when he was attacked and shot. When the smoke was clear, persons went and made checks. Ensworth, he was seen lying on the floor of a bedroom with blood coming from the right side of his jaw. He could not speak to tell anyone what took place. The police, they were called and they rushed with him to hospital. It was determined that he received a gunshot wound to the right side of his jaw. He was admitted in hospital in a serious condition. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, two 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem. Now, in this next report, I carried a story on Saturday, June 1. It was about an incident that took place the previous morning. Friday, May 31, about a few minutes to 
7 o'clock. A guy named Ricardo Warren, also known as Text. He was a 37-year-old farmer who lived at Lagood in the Withorn area of Westmoreland. Text, he was driving his 2002 Toyota Premium motor car along the burnt ground main road in the parish of Hanover. He was heading towards Montego Bay when a motorcycle with a male and a female aboard rode up. The male, he pulled a gun and opened a barrage of gunshots, hitting text to his chest and his neck. Text, in trying to escape, he drove his car to a nearby community. The male and the female on the bike, they then made good their escape. The police, they were called and they took text out of the car and transported him to the Cornwall Regional Hospital. So, like I told you in the report I carried on Saturday, June 1, while the police were transporting Tex to hospital, he told them who the guy was that shot him. Tex, he died moments later whilst he was being treated in hospital. So, just in case you missed it, this was not the first time Tex was attacked and shot. On Wednesday morning, October 4, last year, at minutes to 7 o'clock, Tex, he was attacked and shot in the Withorn police area. He survived that attack and he told the police that he was shot by that guy on your screen. His name is Zian Webster, but he's popularly known as Goofy. He is 30 years old and he's from Maras in the Withorn area of Westmoreland but he was living at Yarkbush in the Mount Carey area of St. James. The police they subsequently arrested and charged Goofy for shooting and injuring Tex. At the time that Tex got shot, Goofy he was out on bail for the Tuesday afternoon, August 25, 2020 killing of that man on your screen his name is carlinius barnes but he was popularly known as laffy laffy was a truck driver and he lived in the same maras area of withorn in westmoreland goofy he was charged for murder along with his brother ocean webster also known as terry and just in case you were wondering why tex was attacked last year october word on the street is that tex he shot and killed that guy on your screen his name is milton campbell but he was popularly known as captain captain was 45 years old at the time captain was shot and killed in some deep bushes in the hills of withorn on wednesday night september 13 last year it is said that Tex, he had set up a camera system and found out that Captain had been stealing his pigs, so he killed him. So, Goofy, he was back in jail for allegedly shooting and injuring Tex and his brother Terry. He was out on bail. Remember now, I told you that Tex, he had told the police who the shooter was before he died. Well... The police, they had picked up O'Shea Webster, also known as Terry, and he has now been charged for killing Tex. The information we are getting is that it was his name that Tex called to the police before he died. So, O'Shea Webster, also known as Terry, he is now in custody on two different murder charges. The mayhem. Now, this next incident sad indeed on monday afternoon june 24 about 2 30 a young man his name is taji thomas he was 26 years old and he lived in the spanish town area of saint catherine we are told that taji and his spouse they went to the beach in ocharias in the parish of sentan while they were at the beach they went tubing a boat was pulling the tubes that they were on when Taje he fell from the tube onto some reef stones. 
As a result, he received serious injuries. Taje, he was rushed to the Sentence Bay Hospital where he was rushed into surgery. But at 3.15 p.m. Monday afternoon, Taje, he died whilst he was being treated. Sad indeed. This next incident, it took place early yesterday morning. Wednesday, June 26, about 2.30. It took place at Boys Content in the Old Arbor area of St. Catherine. We are learning that a team of police officers acting on intelligence and armed with search warrant. They went to a house in search of that guy on your screen. His name is Jerome Bailey, but he was also known as Dimas or Dim Dim. He was 25 years old and he lived at Planters Hall in the same Old Arba area of St. Catherine. We are told that Dimas, he was wanted by the police for shooting and seriously wounding another guy. The report is that the police, they entered the house and Dimas, he was seen pointing a gun at them. The police, they took evasive action and in a few seconds, it was all over. The police, they're claiming that Demas, he fell clutching an Intratech 22 LR semi-automatic pistol with the serial number intact. It was affixed with a magazine containing 11 9mm rounds. He received gunshot wounds to his upper body and he ended up dying on the spot. A police constable also received gunshot wounds to his left thigh. The policeman, he was treated in hospital and admitted. Indicom and the police, they are carrying out investigation. The mayhem. The me so let me ask you something. <laughs> let me ask you something. Have you hit on the love button as yet? If you have not yet done so, remember to hit on it. Also, look at you now. We are trying to reach 300,000 subscribers by year end. Tell a friend. Tell a friend. For tell a friend. And if you're not subscribed yet, <laughs> it no cost you a dollar. It no cost you a dime. It no cost you a pence. It no cost you a pound for touch pan the subscribe button. Because when you subscribe, as soon as you upload a new video, you'll be one of the first to be notified got it now in the final story for today that guy on your screen his name is joey and murray but he was popularly known as joey on february 28th earlier this year joey he celebrated his 20th birthday he lived at geneva district in the grangeville area of westmoreland Joey, he's the younger brother of Romain Mori, also known as Bartes. Bartes is now in police custody on murder and shooting charges, and he is said to be the member of a gang that is in conflict with another gang based in the Crowder area of Grange Hill. Now, let me go back and give you a little history. That guy on your screen. His name is Chamos da Costa Drummond. On November 16, 2022, Chamos, he would have celebrated his 33rd birthday, but he was killed three days before his birthday. But let me go back a few years before. On Saturday, July 30, 2016, Chamos and Bartes. They had an argument at Grangeville in Westmoreland. That argument got physical and Chamos, he used a knife to inflict serious wounds to the left side of Bartes' chest, almost killing him. Bartes, he was admitted in hospital and Chamos, he was arrested and charged for wounding with intent. The case went to court and it is said that there was an out of court settlement between Bartes and Shamos. It is said that Shamos, he was supposed to pay Bartes 
some more money, which he did not do. So this caused a bad vibes. A few years after that incident, hoodlums attacked and shut up Shamos in Grangeville. He spent a few months in hospital and he was subsequently released. In October 2022, hoodlums, they went and opened a barrage of gunshots at Shamos' house. Shamos, he was not at home when this took place and no one was harmed in that attack. But on Sunday afternoon, November 13, 2022, three days before Shamos' birthday, he and a female, they were at Big Bridge in the parish of Westmoreland catching fish. Shamos, he had parked his car on the roadside. About some minutes after 3 o'clock that afternoon, a motorcycle rode up with two hoodlums aboard. The hoodlums, they brandished guns and opened gunfire at Shamos, hitting him to his head and his right foot, killing him on the spot. So, shortly after Shamos was killed, persons who were close to him, they were saying that it was Bartes' brother, Joey, who was involved in that shooting. Follow me now. This is not me saying that, yes, he was involved. But I can tell you this. After I carried this story on Monday, November 14, 2022, about the killing of Shamos, many persons texted me and told me that Joey, Bartes' younger brother, was involved. We are also told that Joey's name was being called on many hoodlum activities in the Grangeville area. Yesterday afternoon, Wednesday, June 26, about some minutes to 6 o'clock, Joey, he was at a shop along the top Geneva main road in Grangeville. He was there with other family members when a white Toyota Axio motor car drove up and stopped. A hoodlum who was armed with a gun jumped out of the car and approached Joey. He then opened gunfire at Joey, who managed to run out of the shop. The hoodlum chased Joey and ended up pumping about 18. Yes, I said 18. The hoodlum, he ended up pumping about 18 bullets into Joey's body. The hoodlum, he then jumped back into the axio, making good his escape. Joey, he ended up dying on the spot. We are told that when the police processed this crime scene, over 20 9mm spent shells were recovered from the scene. The mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody. Tell a friend, for tell a friend, for tell a friend about Papa in News Link and PNL Blog TV. Like, subscribe, and share. With silver sin, if we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. If we just unite, what a country this will be. If we just unite, Jamaica live in unity. Hey, crime with a mash up Jamaica, criminals them a mash up Jamaica, Jamaicans mash up Jamaica. Criminals, they're
Them a mash up Jamaica. 